We're continuing our studies in Chapter 20 on DNA Replication and Repair, and in this lesson we'll be looking at mismatch and base excision repair. Mismatch repair is intended to correct mistakes made by DNA polymerase where it's incorporated the wrong nucleotide. There's nothing wrong with the nucleotide itself, it's simply in the wrong place, and so we need to remove it and replace it with the correct nucleotide. In this case, the first protein to bind is mute S. In our figure here at the top of the screen, mute S is shown in ribbon diagram form in blue and green. It binds to the DNA, pictured here in red, and it distorts or bends the DNA. That's the signal that induces an endonuclease to bind. The endonuclease is going to clip out the wrong nucleotide so that DNA polymerase can then replace it with the correct one. It is an endonuclease because it cuts within a sequence. The question is, how does the endonuclease know which strand is wrong? We have two strands of DNA. Is the nucleotide that's incorrect in one strand or the other? How does it know which one is wrong? Mature DNA is methylated at distinct sites, and that's illustrated in the figure at the top of the screen here on the far left. Each strand of DNA has been methylated. This occurs after replication. In the process of replication, remember we separate those two parent strands and we synthesize a new strand. Eventually the new strand will also become methylated. But in that short window of time between when the strand is newly synthesized and before it's methylated, we have hemimethylated DNA. That is only one strand is methylated. So this is how the endonuclease knows which is the newer strand. It's lacking the methyl groups. The newer strand is assumed to be in error, and so the endonuclease clips out the wrong nucleotide, DNA polymerase fills in the correct one, and we always need DNA ligase to seal that nick, that final link between the nucleotides. Base excision repair has to do with the removal and replacement of bases that have been damaged. So in this case, we don't want to clip out the nucleotide, the entire nucleotide, because in that case, that nucleotide might be incorporated into another strand of DNA, and it's been damaged. So instead, we want to first remove the damaged base. This is accomplished by the enzyme DNA glycosylase. It's a glycosylase because it's going to break the glycosidic link connecting the base to the sugar. It binds to the DNA and removes the damaged base. The result is an abasic site, and that's in our figure here. This is very similar to what we saw in our last lesson in depurination. An AP endonuclease then binds, and it's going to clip out the remaining sugar phosphate of that nucleotide. We need DNA polymerase to fill in the correct nucleotide, and then we always need DNA ligase to seal the nick. This is called an AP endonuclease. The AP has to do with the fact that it's abasic. We're missing a purine or pyrimidine base. Therefore, it is apurinic or apyrimidinic, hence AP endonuclease. Let's look at how that DNA glycosylase works. In the figure at the bottom of the screen here, our DNA glycosylase is in the gray trace, and our DNA is in blue. It binds to the DNA, it recognizes the damaged base, and flips out that base. In this particular example, we've deaminated a cytosine to form uracil, and we need to remove that base. So it flips out the base and clips it off. It also flips in an arginine side chain that's in its active site. Remember, arginine has that permanent positive charge, so it will bind very well to the negatively charged phosphodiester backbone. The purpose here is not only has the glycosylase removed the base, but it remains bound to the DNA to recruit the next enzyme, the endonuclease. Well, how does that endonuclease work? Well, as is the case for many enzymes that work on DNA, it contains a magnesium ion in the active site, and that stabilizes the anionic leaving group. 
it also remains bound to the DNA and that will recruit the next worker in our series of events, the DNA polymerase that's going to fill in what's missing. So what you'll notice in these DNA repair mechanisms is that for each component that binds it remains bound to the DNA to recruit the next enzyme or protein in the process. We have here a more detailed figure of the mechanism of the AP endonuclease. All you need to remember is that there's a magnesium in the active site and that it bends the DNA to expose the abasic site, that it remains bound to recruit the DNA polymerase. In our next video lesson, we'll look at the mechanism for repairing thymine dimers and we'll also look at how we repair mechanical breaks in the DNA.